you know, if they hadn't gone to war in Iraq, none of this would be happening. So I think... Right. It wouldn't be happening in Syria? There wouldn't be Well, it might be happening actors. in Syria, but the, what happened in Syria wouldn't have happened in Iraq. Iraq would not have been, in effect, drastically altered as it has been. But Mr. Cheney has been incredibly adroit for the last six years or so, attacking the administration for not doing an adequate job of cleaning up the mess that he made. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's unseemly. And I, I give President Bush, by the way, a lot of credit for trying to stay out of this debate and letting other people work through it. We are still stuck in this position of watching and listening as both sides blame the others for things done years ago, slamming us into another Middle Eastern mess. And we are seemingly still stuck in this notion that throwing money and weapon at rebels is the best way to protect American interests. And then we have ISIS. And then we have Syria. Have we missed anything? The nightmare that is Iraq and the Middle East right now continues. And it seems we as Americans still aren't grasping how to deal with a part of the world we are almost always seemingly clueless about. Welcome into Midpoint, author of the New York Times bestseller, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Islam and the Crusades, and the director of Jihad Watch, Robert Spencer, joins us today. Robert, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me on. Here is the latest. Iraq, the vice president, issuing a decree on Thursday calling for parliament to meet next week to start the process of creating a new government. Is there any reason whatsoever for we sitting here half a world away to believe that anything that will be done in trying to form a new parliament and putting everybody peaceably together in Iraq is going to come close to working at this stage? No, there's absolutely zero chance that anything that the Maliki government does, anything that the United States does, is going to stop right now the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. They see victory. They are going to for final victory. They are a Sunni group, and the Maliki government is Shiite. And so even if the Shiite government brings a lot of Sunnis in in a minority position, it's not going to satisfy ISIS, and they're going to keep coming. Is that just it now and something else? We, we always seem to be talking about here, Robert, things that we're missing. The one thing that it, what you just said and what it seems we're missing is there's blood in the water right now. This is like any good shark attack. ISIS senses it. The opposition senses it right now. There is no reason to believe whatsoever that they will back off or at any point be caught trying to say, let's be peaceable and let's be friends, correct? No, absolutely not. These people hold to an ideology that is that doesn't it even include that as a possibility. And so you're absolutely right. It's just not going to happen. Uh, the, the fact is that they see the uh, attempts to bring peace, the attempts to achieve a negotiated settlement as a sign of the weakness of their opponents. And it only emboldens them to fight all the more. Robert, I believe that you're still with us. Yes, I am. Okay, sorry, there's yes. a connection here in the Skype. It's all right, but let's move on because you mentioned the word ideology in here. Yes. I, I, I'm almost exasperated at this point because we cannot seem to get a solid answer here. The ideology exists now. It existed 10 years ago. It existed a thousand years ago. The ideology that is in the Middle East, what we're talking about here when it comes down to terrorist groups, different groups, different political factions, religious factions. Why can we not get it through our heads that no matter what we do, any administration, we cannot fight that ideology, or at least we are not seeking to fight it correctly? Well, I think people don't want to accept it. They don't want to, they can't get their minds around it. It's not even conceivable to them that it's possible that a major world religion and one that is held by over a billion people in the world could actually have teachings that justify violence and supremacism and that have been exploited throughout the history of this religion in order to, uh, to buttress this kind of violence that we're seeing today. People can't believe that and they think there must be some other reason why they're fighting. We must be able to achieve some kind of negotiated settlement. If we just give both sides a little bit of what they want, everything will be okay. But you're absolutely right. It's not going to work. It'll never change. Any attempt that we make to intervene in there would be futile and self-defeating and weaken America even further. All right, let's move on to Syria now because there's some news there as well. I want you to listen. I want our audience to listen to. This is a, a soundbite from Valerie Amos, the U.N. humanitarian chief, discussing the situation in Syria. Listen up. 241,000 people continue to live under siege conditions, unable to leave their communities 
and we're unable to get in to deliver much needed humanitarian assistance. Since my last briefing to the Council, only 2,467 people, or 1% of those living in besieged areas, have received much needed food assistance. All right, now here comes something else about Syria that we're hearing. They need, there, there's no doubt, they need assistance here. But let's look at what the, the United States is considering militarily. The president is now asking for $500 million from Congress to train and equip what the White House is calling appropriately vetted members of the Syrian opposition. I have to tell you that when I repeat that to people who are in the know, Robert, uh, even yourself, when I say appropriately vetted members, they fall down laughing because yes. they simply cannot see how you can vet these people and be able to know once again where the money and where the weapons are going, correct? They don't even know what questions to ask. Because remember, in 2011, the Obama administration scrubbed all mention of Islam and jihad from counter-terror training materials. And so even if we believe that Islam is a religion of peace that's been hijacked and misused by these, these groups, still it's not even allowed for officials to get to, to study that understanding of Islam. So how are they going to be able to distinguish these so-called moderates from the so-called extremists. There's absolutely no way. And the crowning incoherence is that the, the fighting forces in Syria who Obama wants to give weapons to are the friends and allies of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. And so there are friends in Syria and our enemies in Iraq. It absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. From your education, from your knowledge, there seems to be, and you've mentioned a connection here, but is there, to your knowledge, any direct connection between the Syrian rebels and ISIS? Oh yes, absolutely. There are a number of factions, but they all have the same ideology, here again. They have the same motives, they have the same goals. And the ones that we chose before the Free Syrian Army as the moderates and gave them weapons, the weapons flowed straight to ISIS and to the Al-Nusra Front, and the Free Syrian Army collaborated with those groups in terrorizing Christian communities in Syria, burning churches, making people free, flee in terror for their lives, and so on. These are the moderates we're supporting. They are absolutely connected with ISIS. In essence, then, would you have any doubt whatsoever that if the United States were to throw money at the Syrian rebels to arm them, perhaps, or to train them, that we would be training through one way, form, shape, or another, ISIS rebels and ISIS fighters as well? I have no doubt about that whatsoever. That is 100% certainty. If we then look at that and we look at... If we can't trust the Syrians and we can't work with the Iraqis, I, I, we always continue to get here, though. It doesn't seem as if there is simply anybody in the region that we can do business with or that we can bring in and trust as far as we can throw them. Or am I missing someone? No, you're right. And it's just a hard thing here again for Americans to accept that there might not be any good guys in this battle and everybody is tainted. And it's best that we stay out of it as much as we can protect our interests, and try to adopt a policy of containment as far as possible to keep the jihad from spreading further. That's all we can do. Now, you said, con you said containment. The United States and the Obama <laughs> administration has what they consider to be a, a system of containment in Yemen, where they have taken the fight to some of the terrorists and the terrorist groups there. They believe they've actually done some good. If you listen to some of the analysts, they will say that really all you've done is you haven't knocked out the problem in Yemen. All you've done is simply contain it and it's basically a fragile containment at best. So is it not fair to say then if the Obama administration uses that as a model for what they want to do in Iraq, for instance, that is a completely false model to have any faith in whatsoever. Sure, you may stop them for a couple of moments, but you're really not going to do anything to take the weapons out of their hands and the danger out of destroying the rest of the Middle East and creating another conflagration. Oh, you're quite right. That's not at all the containment I was talking about. And what Obama has done in Yemen is essentially handed over to al-Qaeda, just as he handed over uh, Libya to groups aligned with al-Qaeda and uh, supported the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And now he wants to support jihadis in Syria. Uh, it's, it's appalling, but at least the man's consistent. Let's discuss also another faction of the Middle East. There seem to be some discussions in the last few weeks about <laughs> Israel. There are some who believe that no matter what happens, whether the United States gets involved or not, that this will spill over into Israel and that will become a next target of ISIS and a logical target of ISIS. What do you think? I don't think there's any doubt about that either. As a matter of fact, it was reported uh, last month 
that there were ISIS fighters from Syria who were amassing along the uh, Golan Heights and at the Israeli border there. And they have stated very clearly that once they defeat Assad, they're going to go into Israel. <sighs> okay, take a breath here with about a minute left, and I have to ask this then. All we've talked about is what is the logical thing that we can do because we have a spreading cancer here that is going to sooner or later affect American interests and other American allies in the region? Other than just pulling ourselves out and saying, that's it, we're done, no more, what is it that we can do? What is a logical first step? Well, I think that one thing we can do is certainly aid the, uh, the, the so-called allies of the U.S. Uh, here again, and there's no good guys in this, like Saudi Arabia, who want to, uh, don't want to see ISIS in power any more than we do, and to help them as much as we can. Of course, they've got billions and billions of dollars and don't really need uh, anything that we can give them, uh, except maybe boots on the ground, which would be a very, very bad idea. Uh, and that was actually, it was the Saudis who were going to fund our, the ill-advised incursion into Syria that Barack Obama wanted to do last year. But one thing we can do is make it absolutely clear that there'll be no American aid and no American alliance to countries that uh, follow Islamic law to oppress women, to deny the freedom of speech, to deny equality of rights to women and non-Muslims and others. And on that basis, uh, break the alliance with Pakistan, strengthen the alliance with countries like India that actually have to face the same jihad threat we do. An awful lot to consider. Basically, cut off the money is what we're saying, too. Robert Spencer, thank you so much for being with us today. We will do this again. Thank you. There are some sobering things to think about in here, but what he's saying is, again, I'll repeat myself, cut off the money. Stay with us, because here on Midpoint, every day on the Newsmax TV network, we question everything.